Praise God, praise God. Pastor Teddy Marshall here, Word Fellowship Ministries. And I just want to get, I want to start with this quick little image here of this bud on this seemingly dead tree, okay? <laughs> All right, now we're going to back around, okay? Trust me, there's a reason why I did that, okay? It goes with the message for today. Praise God, praise God. Okay, I know. Don't talk about my camera skills, okay? <laughs> All right. So the title of today's message is, It's Not Dead. Amen? So let me give a little, a little story. Oh, there's another one there too. Okay, anyway. So the this week was really something else. Um, it was, I was really feeling kind of weighed down by the happenings of this week. And I could say I didn't realize how much, but... I did realize how much. <laughs> so one of the things, well, there's this young lady that the Lord has uh, had our paths to cross, and sweet little uh, young lady, um, and she had a very uh, unnecessary accident. It could have been avoided. And when I found out what happened, I was so angry, I was almost in tears. And that's not good so I did that particular moment I had to pull back for a minute right and gather myself <laughs> but anyway and then there was a neighbor that um, a turn of events uh, by no you know no cause of his own um, he had to make some changes in his life so all of this was kind of weighing on me so anywho um, and then there's this tree okay so all of these things weighing down on me and everything and I came to and this is right outside my balcony so I came to the balcony door and city girl and I am made sure there were no bugs out here before I opened it up <laughs> anywho okay so then I just started my spirit just started praising God and as I started doing that the Lord just kind of you know the Holy Spirit just has just look look so when I fought, you know, that heaviness and the darkness and the despair that was trying to swallow me up, and the Lord said, nah, but look, look. And what came to me, um, what he wanted for today's message was, it's not dead. That tree, there's not a leaf. It's hard to tell because in the back you see this really big pine tree, you know, these big pine trees. But this particular tree, it's like almost all the leaves are gone and the ones that are there just barely hanging on and they're you know looking a little like they've been in a war or something but then there was this bloom and I was like oh wow look at God okay so my spirits you know started to lift and it was cool because then I just started praising God even more and with that perspective it freed me up so that we have weekly uh, we call it power prayer sessions on Saturdays and uh, um, it's intercessory prayer this encounter with God freed me up for God to be able to use me to just flow the way he wanted to flow and it was really powerful and I had not noticed before that the bud on the tree and these are the apps I'm talking now I see that there's another one over here I'm not gonna try to you know send y'all in a vertigo and flip it around <laughs> so you can see it is there okay anywho the word tells us about when Jesus uh, returned to Galilee and the crowd was excited they had been uh, they received him and were looking for him and expecting him and they were all excited okay then a man named J Jairus or Jairus uh, a, he was a director of the synagogue he fell at Jesus' feet, begging him to come to his house to heal his daughter. Now, on his way there, Jesus was intercepted while en route by the woman with the issue of blood. That's another story, and we're familiar with that. She gets healed in that encounter. And just as he was, Jesus was ending his conversation with her, a man came from Jai Jairus' house um, announcing to Jesus, you don't even have to waste your time. The girl has passed away. She's gone. It's done. Jesus instructed to disregard the bulletin, and he proceeded to the house. Now let's look at Luke chapter 8, verses, um, verse 51. 
And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. And all were weeping for and bewailing her. But he said, do not weep for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing full well that she was dead. And grasping her hand, he, Jesus, called, saying, Child, arise from the sleep of death. And her spirit returned from death, and she arose immediately, and he directed that she should be given something to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had occurred. What are you looking for? What are you settling your sights on? What are you settling your heart on? Or what are you reflecting on? What is your expectation? Is it what God said? Or have the cares of the world worn down your expectation, aka also known as your faith, attempting to get you to receive the spirits of despair, dismay, hopelessness, helplessness, um, or possibly even anger and rage that's what i was feeling when i found out what happened to this young lady because it really could have been prevented um anyway have recent events and or observances angered or frustrated you to tears or almost there well let me encourage you with this it's not over until or unless god says it is over and done the word is something to say about that numbers chapter 23 verse 19 God is not a man that he should lie, that he should tell or act a lie, neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? What did God say? What did he promise you? What vision did he give you for your next, for your purpose, what you're supposed to accomplish, achieve, access, acquire, and cause to be fruitful and multiply? What did God say unto you? What did he reveal? What is the vision he released to you? The Lord explained to me that I was letting the cares of the world become the cares of my life. You see, I, I know, cast my cares on him. I know not to hold it. I know to go to the altar. Although, you know, we still, we're not perfect. So we still, I still, I'll say me. I still have uh, uh, moments of moments, <laughs> but I know to shake it off. I know to go to God. I know to cast them on him. But this recent revelation from God, he let me know that the enemy was causing me, misleading me into taking on the happenings around me and those of the world's events as my own a burden that for and becoming a allowing it to become a burden for me i released it all to god repenting and thanking him almost simultaneously this freed me up to facilitate and participate in this power participate powerfully in this week's power prayer session god always shows up in our weekly sessions however in this one he caused us to experience his glory showed and gave a word to each of us he spoke to each of us, ministering to each of us, encouraged each of us. I had no idea what the others were experiencing, but the Lord released knowledge and understanding to each of us, each of them through me, plus prophecy, to confirm what he had already laid out. He led them to pray and speak into my life, so I received as well. God is so good. He leaves no one out. You see, God is not about to let the wiles and tactics of the enemy weigh down those who were sold out to him, leaving us in a state of forlornness. He is calling us to remember what he said by any means necessary. Now, our part is to come to him for insight and his perspective on matters, whatever's happening on matters at hand. Repent as necessary, accept and receive his counsel and get back in his main flow. See, it's not always that sometimes we don't realize, you know, that we um, are in that state of mind or that state of emotion because um, we're still doing and we're still going and we don't even realize it. And that's what was happening to me until that news of this young lady um, came to me. And then it was like, that was it. Anyway, 
I pray for her. Yes, I didn't just leave it there. But God wants us to know that there are times that we're going to have to pull back, not to retreat from the enemy, never that, but pull back in and unto God, get get up in his in his uh, under up under his wing. OK, and in that he can minister to us and in that he can give us his perspective in that he can help us to um, discern what's happening and then we can hear his instruction his strategies his direction on how to proceed whether to fix the thing um you know hands on fix it prayer st always starting with prayer but he will let us know what we are to do now back to the seemingly dead tree <laughs> as we continue yes okay so it was the dead tree then i saw the bloom okay but as we continued in this powerful session with God, I started noticing, because my desk is near the, the uh, balcony door and my tree, <laughs> I started noticing that other buds started appearing on other branches. Now, before anybody who knows trees and you know, you come in and you say, you know, that's what that type of tree does, okay but not in a matter of moments, not in a matter of minutes, okay? So this truly was an act of God. This was, it was a miracle. You see what looks like by all, wow, another bud just opened up. <laughs> God is showing off for real here. Praise God, praise God. What looks like is dead. What appears to be dead, what may feel like is dead, but what did God say? What did he tell you he was going to do? What did he tell you you were to be doing? Knowing full well that he's backing us, that he's giving us everything, he's preparing and equipping us for whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing. Amen? So, let me tell you, it's not dead. It is not dead. Whatever God showed you, whatever he told you, whatever he revealed, that vision, it is not dead. Speak life to it. Now, Numbers 23, verse 20. You see, I have received his command to bless Israel. He has blessed and I cannot reverse or qualify it. With all of this being said, and the picture of the tree and the bud, I hope you, have, you were able to see it clearly. Anywho, with all of this being said, I receive God's command to bless you today. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for just you being so awesome. I praise you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. And I lift up your name above everything. Lord, I release your blessing unto your people. Some with all of the happenings, all of the things that are going on around us, personal responsibilities, but also the things that we notice that are happening in the lives of other people and we care. We have your compassion, we have your heart. Lord God, the enemy's been trying to bog us down with this, but we are not to carry a burden on ourselves, but cast the burden on you. So forgive us, Father God, for trying to be you. And we got wheelbarrows and, no, I'll say pickup truckloads full of, of, of cares, of things that are around us. And it's preventing us from going forth in you. Please forgive us, sir. Now, God, with that being said, we lift our hands to receive from you. What say you, sir? What do you have for us to do? Oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you. I bless your people, Lord God, just as you have instructed me to do, empowered me to do, authorized me to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We look excited and ex ex excited and expectantly for the manifestation of the testimonies, God. Your hand at work in our lives that we may glorify you and expand your kingdom. Thank you, sir, for hearing us this day, lifting our heads whoo, and encouraging us directly. And yes, I do ask that there are some that are really weighed down, Lord God. Touch them, sir. They need you. They can't get through it without you. And I know you will. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time.